Brain box. Tesco knows how to embarrass someone. So this happened to my mum's co-worker today, but my mum was also there, also on tablet. So my mum's co-worker is, I think, almost 18 slash just about 18. I drink. So she ordered a home delivery from Tesco supermarket, that is over 50 items, and when she went to the end you get the option to use the trays, UHV to give them back, or get it in plastic bags, environment. She puts plastic bags as she will be going from work to get it in, literally 30 seconds down the road, and notices there's a comment section as a joke she writes I don't care about the environment, you know what you can double bag it for me, actually you know what just wrap it all in plastic then she handed the laptop to her dad to put card info in, and check over the order. He commented on the comment, but decided not to remove it, unfortunately she didn't know this till she got the digital receipt. Today she was telling my mum how embarrassed she was, and worrying about what they must think about her. A little later the truck pulls up and her, and my mum walked over there, my mum was helping to make it quicker, they get over there, and start to get the bags. Everything was in its own bag. Like she ordered two packs of cookies and they came in two separate bags. So now they have over 50 plastic bags, they still only charged her 40p for the bags though, 40p no matter how many bags for delivery. I doubt she'll leave a comment on an order again. I want to speak with your manager. Short and sweet, but I love it. Working retail as a sales associate at office maximum almost 20 years ago now, I had to explain to this irate person that we were in fact out of a sale item towards the end of our promo week. This is unacceptable, I want to speak to your manager. I reply no problem at all, smile at her, and make myself busy in the immediate vicinity. After several minutes of angry pacing and obnoxious chuffing, she marches up to me to scream well. Where are they? Oh, you wanted me to call them for you too? The manager thought it was pretty funny. Just stop talking. Okay. This was a hilarious interaction I had today with a customer at work, and my first true MC moment. I work for a pretty niche company, so I'm going to have to be a little vague about the specifics of my job, but suffice it to say a big part of it is phone support for various issues our clients are having. So today a client called in about a supposed technical issue she was having. The call starts out pretty normal. She sounded a little agitated but no biggie, I've dealt with much worse. I counseled her a little bit on the problem and she asked if I can hang on the line while she tries again. Of course I can do that. While she fiddled with it, she mentioned about how annoyed she was about the whole thing, etc. I, sincerely, apologized for the issue, and that's when she said it. Just stop talking. Okay. I can do that. Easiest thing a client has ever asked of me. So I stopped talking. After a few moments of silence, she started making little comments about things she's having trouble with and wondering aloud about what the problem might be. But she wasn't asking me any questions, nor did she tell me I was allowed to speak again. So I didn't, despite having valuable input on the problem she was having. This went on for another few minutes, until she simply hung up on me out of frustration. Regardless of what she may think, I feel that this was a customer service win. I will always go out of my way, to do whatever a customer asks of me. So you don't want it in the driveway? I was inspired to post this by another HOA post I saw on this sub a little while back. I live in a neighborhood with an HOA, and they have a rule against having large vehicles in the driveway for more than 24 hours. My parents used to have an RV, and we would go on long trips several times a year. Before each we would park it in the driveway for a few days, to pack at a leisurely pace. The HOA hates this, and eventually finds us, and tells us not to do it again. Here's where the malicious compliance comes in. In our neighborhood, the roads are public, not private. We did a bit of research, and found out that in our area, on public roads, a vehicle can be parked for one week, before it needs to move. So, we do the reasonable thing and park our huge RV in front of the house of the head of our HOA. For a week. And then we move it a few dozen feet, and leave it another week. And then go on our trip. We never heard about it from the HOA, presumably because they realize they have no control on public streets. 
After that they stopped complaining when our RV was in the driveway for a few days every couple months. You won't accept a revised quote? Fine. I originally posted this over in slash r slash a shell attacks and a couple people suggested that it would fit here as well. This one is pretty short and sweet. I work in distribution sales, so our margins are generally pretty thin. We make the majority of our money by selling volume. We have different rebates that quotes are eligible for, which are provided by the vendor that we distribute for. Factors like volume, promotions, and a number of other things. I had a quote out for about $110k, and when the customer sent me the purchase order, I realized it that I had quoted it wrong by about 6% in my favor. Being honest and not wanting the customer to catch it later and get pissed off, I picked up the phone to call him and let him know he was going to make an extra $6,600. Here's how that went. Me, hey Jerry, it's burning Griverlster at Zizcorp. About that PO you just sent, gets cut off abruptly. Jerry, the PO is fine, it matches the quote you sent me. Me, yep, that's why I'm calling. I misquoted this, and, cut off again. Jerry, no, this is bullshit. You fucked up, and quoted it wrong, and I expect you to honor the quote. Me, you're right, I apologize and hope you have a great afternoon. So fuck him, I kept the extra money and got paid about 3 times my normal commission on the deal. Turns out he had the money. This isn't my story, though the story of my late grandfather. No TLDR if you wanna know the story reddit. My grandmother recently told me the story about how my grandfather got his blue pickup truck from an idiot salesman. My grandfather, whose name will be Chuck, always dressed like he was low on money, ripped up shirts and jackets cause it's cheaper than buying new shit. But Chuck actually had quite a bit of money from some stocks he invested in anyways onto the story. Chuck's car recently broke down, and he needed a new one. My grandmother always liked a blue pickup from the local dealers, so he decided to buy it. Chuck loved to haggle for a good deal and this time was no different the car $18,000 and the salesman, who we'll call Jack, doesn't even think Chuck has made that much in his life, based on his appearance so, while their negotiation Chuck says. Chuck I'll give you 9,000 today. Jack if you can get me 9,000 by sundown the car's your. And with that they shook on it, and Chuck went off to the bank, where he wrote up a check for $9,000 and an hour later he walked up to the dealer with a shit-eating grin on his face, when he set down the check, and asked where's the keys? Jack tried to argue that there was no contract, but when Chuck called Jack's boss, Bob, the conversation went as followed. Bob Jack did you agree to the terms? Jack I didn't think he'd actually get it. Bob did you agree or not? Jack I did. Bob then give him the fucking car then pack your things, you're fired. Chuck drove off with his truck and the dealer is there to this day, I'm gonna get my first car from there soon, although I don't think I'll get the same deal sadly. Thank you.